Story recapped here, today I'm going to explain a comedy, horror, and mystery film called Aquaslash. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One night, Wet Valley Water Park lifeguards Cindy and Brad decide to sneak away and enjoy their time alone. As they are having an intimate moment by the slides, a mysterious person suddenly appears with a sharp machete. Cindy screams as the stranger pushes Brad off the platform where he falls to his death, and it isn't long before Cindy is dismembered and killed as well. Later on, the fresh graduates of Valley Hills High decide to celebrate at the water park. Alice, the head of the grad committee, announces that they'll stay there for the rest of the weekend. Naturally, everyone gets excited, so they immediately rush in to have a great time. Josh, along with his two friends Chad and Slim, will be performing that night. They're in a band called The Blades, and despite the break, the three are quite upset that their stage is small. Then, Conrad Carter introduces himself to the boys. He's the caretaker of the water park and has worked there for years. Conrad warns the boys to be careful, saying things can get a little bent around there, but they just ignore him. Meanwhile, many girls join the park's annual car wash event, wherein two winners will receive a free trip to Europe. The event is headed by Priscilla, who happily washes the cars with the girls. Then, a young man named Tommy suddenly shows up, agitated because he can't find his girlfriend, Kim. He asks Priscilla where Kim is, but she says she doesn't know and tells him to leave. On the other hand, Kim approaches Josh by the stage. She happens to be Josh's ex-girlfriend and she works at the water park. Tommy then finds Kim with Josh and the rest of the band, approaching them with an intimidating demeanor. However, the guys don't really pay him any mind, so he quickly leaves with Kim. At the same time, Michael sits in his car listening to a voice message sent by his son, Josh. His son wants him to watch their band perform later that night at the water park, but Michael is yet to decide. Meanwhile, two students bring a bottle of liquor into the pool. Then, they collide as they're sliding down and the other banks his head right into the bottle, causing a massive injury. So, the water park owner, Paul, calls paramedics to take care of the injured student. Unfortunately, the pool is now contaminated with blood and broken glass. Conrad then suggests draining the pool, but Paul refuses. Later that night, Chad and Slim ask Tommy to help them figure out the mixing board and speakers by the stage. But as it turns out, the boys are only doing that so Josh and Kim could have a moment alone. Once Tommy, Chad, and Slim are gone, Kim and Josh become more intimate throughout the night. Then they go somewhere isolated so they can do whatever they please, and they enjoy their time together in the steamy shower. However, they are unaware that someone is secretly recording them. Meanwhile, Michael has a dinner date with Priscilla. Despite knowing that she is married to Paul, Michael feels unbothered and just continues to have a wonderful time with her. After their discreet session, Kim and Josh return to the water park, and Josh immediately proceeds to perform with the band. Meanwhile, Kim is watching him from the crowd when Tommy suddenly approaches her. He asks her why her hair is wet, and she simply says she went swimming like everybody else. On the other hand, Priscilla and Michael arrive to watch Josh's performance. The crowd is wild, and everybody's having a great time. Then, Phil joins the party and sends everyone Josh and Kim's video that he recorded earlier, revealing that he was the one secretly watching them. Upon seeing the video, Tommy angrily marches up the stage to attack Josh, who just finished performing. He beats Josh to a pulp and leaves the party, dragging Kim along with him. As if that isn't enough, the situation becomes even more chaotic when Priscilla overhears Paul's conversations with Alice. Paul has been cheating on Priscilla with Alice for months now, so Priscilla leaves the party with Slim. Hurt and exhausted, Josh leaves the party as well. Moments later, Michael approaches Josh, interested in buying the water park, and wants to know his thoughts about the plan. However, Josh is having none of it, and he's upset because Michael did nothing when Tommy beat him up earlier. Meanwhile, Alice hides in the bushes to eavesdrop and learn about what Michael intends to do. She rushes to Paul's office and asks him if he's planning to sell the water park, but Paul simply says no. However, Alice doesn't believe him, and she becomes distraught that Paul is cutting her out of his life that early. So, she slams the door and leaves with frustration. On the other hand, Kim keeps looking for Josh, and it isn't long before Josh finds her in Chad's room. At the same time, a mysterious person installs blades inside one of the slides. Morning comes, and Michael observes the water park from afar, looking at the people climbing the stairs to try out the water slides. Then, suddenly, someone starts threatening him with a gun. 
Michael tells the person to stop, but he only gets shot in the leg. He then gets cornered, so he desperately enters the mechanical room to escape. However, to his surprise, he finds the dead bodies of Cindy and Brad hidden in the storage room. On the other hand, Tommy smokes in his car, bummed out that he just got fired. Kim also broke up with him, so he sends her several messages to show where she is and tries calling her. Then, Conrad suddenly shows up, startling Tommy. Conrad sits with him inside the vehicle, convincing him to forget about Kim. Conrad also adds that he just hurt himself because Kim doesn't love him, but Tommy can't do that because he loves her too much. It's easier for Tommy to blame Josh, but Conrad assures him that he's not the problem. Annoyed, Tommy tells Conrad to leave him alone, so the old man mocks him, pointing out that he's already alone. The day goes on, and Conrad starts preparing the pool for the students. He opens the pipes for the long slide, so everyone can enjoy their time at the water park. Unfortunately, nobody has still noticed the blades installed in one of the slides. As Carter finishes his task, he sees blood on the grass, right below the water slides. He then looks around with a concerned expression on his face before finally walking away. On the other side of the park, Priscilla enjoys her time with Slim. Unfortunately, Paul catches them and orders the young man to leave. The couple then argues and Paul expresses his annoyance because he can't find Cindy or Brad anywhere. However, Priscilla just doesn't care, telling Paul they probably left to get away from him. Frustrated, Paul assigns Priscilla to be the lifeguard for that day, reminding her that she still works there. Back at the pool, the students are having a great time. Paul then shows up and gathers the participants for the water slide contest he's holding. Josh thinks about joining the contest with Chad and Slim, but Slim is nowhere to be found. Priscilla then struts in, waving a big trophy in the air, and everyone cheers for her as she tells the registered teams to go to the top of the slide immediately. Suddenly, Tommy shows up. So Priscilla reminds him that he's fired and shouldn't be there, but Tommy claims that he came as a guest and wants to join the contest leaving Priscilla irritated. She even threatens to call the cops on Tommy, but Paul stops her, telling her to calm down. As Tommy approaches the entrance to the water slide, Phil and his friends stop him. Phil tells Tommy nobody wants him there, so he leaves in frustration. The contest is about to start, but Josh and Chad still can't find Slim. With no other choice, they ask him to join their team instead. Meanwhile, Tommy is about to leave the place when he notices something odd about one of the slides. He sees water leaking out of it, and he also finds plastic shavings on the ground. Unaware of the danger that awaits them, the students quickly climb the stairs to the water slides. Tommy warns them that something is off, telling them to stop the race, but everyone just ignores him. The mechanics of the game is to form a three-person group and slide down the water slides, and the first person to finish will win $500. Paul and Priscilla will assist the students at the top of the slides while Conrad is tasked to keep track of the teams below. Soon, Paul fires his gun and the contest begins. The students prepare to slide down with Josh's team on one of the slides. Tommy then shows up again begging Paul and Priscilla to stop the race and insisting that something is wrong. Sadly, nobody listens to him. Everyone proceeds with the race and Phil, who is high and pissed, pushes Tommy into one of the slides. Unfortunately, Alice ends up getting dismembered in the slide while her teammates die after hitting the blades. Blood fills the pool, leaving the spectators wondering what's happening. It isn't long before Alice's severed body parts drop into the water, and that's when everything descends into chaos. Josh tries to go up the slide to see if he can still help the girls, but the water current is too strong for him. Meanwhile, Conrad passes out in shock and falls down his chair, breaking his ankle. On the other hand, Tommy falls into the very same slide with blades. Luckily, he manages to stop himself from further sliding down, seeing Alice's dead teammates stuck on the blades. Meanwhile, a guest calls the authorities for help while her son watches the bloodbath. Conrad then tries to reach Priscilla with the walkie-talkie, but it suddenly starts malfunctioning. Sadly, everyone on top of the slides remains unaware of the situation below. Priscilla even challenges Paul to join the race, and although he initially refuses, he eventually agrees. However, Paul and his team pick the slide with deadly blades. Luckily, Paul hears Josh before further sliding down and he quickly lets go of the two girls in front of him. Josh tries pulling up Paul while his teammates crash into Tommy, instantly killing him. More dismembered body parts and blood fill the pool, leaving everyone losing their minds. Carter knows that he has to do something, so he screams at Kim and Chad to turn off the water pumps back in the mechanical room. There, Kim finds several dead people, including Slim and Michael. She can only scream in horror as she looks at Michael's corpse, a roll of money placed inside his mouth. Meanwhile, Paul fails to pull himself over the slide and ends up getting dismembered too. 
Josh tries to stop the rest of the students from sliding down, but he only gets ignored and pushed into one of the slides. Luckily, he ends up in the slide with no blades and survives. After some time, Josh and Kim meet up with a lawyer, who reveals that Michael left Josh his entire estate. However, he didn't manage to buy the water park, which costs $20 million. Michael's company plans to replace the water park with a shopping complex, so Josh signs the papers and finalizes everything. He hands the $20 million check to Priscilla, who is sitting beside him. Josh comforts Priscilla as she cries, telling her he's sorry, but she says it's not his fault. Then, Priscilla slowly smiles, revealing that she's responsible for the killings. As it turns out, her father accidentally died at the water park when she was still a girl and no one even bothered helping him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.